Dear students, uh, I welcome you to today's uh, another session of our online um, class. And uh, if you recall, for the past um, three weeks now, we have been talking about uh, some of the topics we have in our third term scheme of work. And uh, by God's grace, today we are going to continue from. Uh, where we stopped uh, last time, and uh, today we shall be looking at the topic for week four, which is still under fundamental human rights. And this time around, the top, top, top topic is going to be uh, categories of human rights. Categories of human rights. And uh, on the days today, when as you all know, what we say for the mental human rights, we're talking about the all the inalienable privileges that a uh, human being has or should enjoy by virtue of being human being. And like I always say, that the only difference between human being and uh, any other creature. Uh, like um, let's say animal is that recognition of the fact that we have fundamental human rights and we also recognize that so when we say human rights like just like I've rightly said that these are privileges these are natural uh, uh, privileges that are endowed that are given to human beings. We are born with them, and uh, as a result of that, everybody has the right to enjoy those fundamental privileges. And uh, we have already, we have also said, or we've discussed the those are the, some of the characteristics of uh, fundamental human rights in our previous uh, classes. Uh, for instance, we have some of the characteristics are for that the human rights are natural. We have it like that. We have we are also we also say that human rights are indispensable. Human rights are indefeasible. When we say human rights are natural, we're talking about that they are embedded in us as human beings. They are given to us by our Creator, and that is why it is or they are natural to us. When we say human rights are indispensable, meaning that it can be given to you. It can be, you know, you cannot even give your own to any other person or somebody will give it to you. No, they are indispensable. It can be given to you, you can't give it to anybody. And they are indivisible, meaning that when you enjoy one particular right, say for instance, now you have freedom uh, of assembly, you must also at the same time have to, I mean, right to enjoy freedom of speech. When you have opportunity to enjoy one particular right, you are you are sure, or you should be sure that you have the right to enjoy any other uh, uh, right as well. So they are indivisible. For you to enjoy particular rights, you must also enjoy other uh, rights. So those are uh, the meaning and the characteristics of uh, uh, fundamental. But for the for the purpose of this class today. We are looking at categories of human rights. When we say categories of human rights, we are talking about the areas in which we can grow uh, fundamental human rights. They, we, we have lots of, of them, several rights, several fundamental human rights. But at the same time, there are some that can be categorized as political and civic rights. There are some that should be categorized as... Uh, uh, economic right uh, and the social as well as cultural right while we also have another one that can be or, I mean some that can be categorized as um, environmental uh, rights just like I've rightly said for the purpose of the class today we're going to look at uh, three major groups uh, in which fundamental human rights can be uh, grouped into as you can uh, rightly see on the board we have written them out here for proper understanding. And uh, let us take it from there. Say, 
For proper understanding and identification, fundamental human rights have been categorized into uh, the following groups. Uh, one, we have civic and political uh, rights. Civic and uh, political rights. When we say civic and political rights, what exactly are we talking about? We are talking about rights that uh, protect or that give us opportunity uh, as citizens to participate in the political uh, affairs of our nation, uh, of our nation, and our responsibility to also carry out our responsibilities as citizens of the country. And uh, you can see some of the examples of civic and political uh, rights. For instance, under that we have right to life, uh, we have right to uh, freedom of movement, right to personal liberty, right to vote and be voted for, amongst other uh, fundamental human rights under civic and political right. Just for um, explanation's sake, right to life, for instance, now, this particular right is talking about opportunity that one has as citizen to live uh, in a country where uh, you are, uh, you can call your own. Uh, no one can say uh, because you are not a Nigerian or you are not a member of a particular country and because of that you should be killed. No, you have the right to life as long whoever you are, whether you are short. You are tall, whether you are fat or you are thin, whatever you are, that fundamental uh, right to life is sacrosanct for every uh, human being. Right to freedom of movement, meaning that whether you can, you have two legs, whether you have three legs, whether you have four legs, whether you have one leg, or whatever you have, whoever you are as human being, you have the right to movement, except because there are caveats to it. Situation whereby you can be you know, placed under as arrest. There are situations that can lead one to that. Situation that can make one not to have or to enjoy uh, freedom of movement. There are situations like that. But naturally, we, uh, as long as there are there, there is no impediment, uh, one can enjoy his or her fundamental human rights, uh, I mean freedom of movement, right to personal liberty. Every human being. She also enjoyed that, and that is also categorized under uh, civic and political uh, right. Then we also have right to vote and be voted for. This particular one is central to our political development. Like I always say, that as long as you are of the age to vote, no one can deprive you of this particular uh, right not to exercise it. Once you are of age, for instance, in Nigeria, Constitution says that once you are age of uh, attain age of eighteen, you can register and uh, vote when the election uh, comes. And uh, you also have the right to be voted for when you have ability to contest in an election. Uh, so we these are some of the examples of uh, rights uh, under civic and political uh, rights. Let's move to number two, where we have. Economic, social, and cultural uh, rights. This particular uh, uh, right or this particular category of uh, fundamental human rights, they are interwoven. That is why they are lumped together there. Economic and I mean, social as well as cultural rights. These are rights that uh, uh, give us more opportunity as social beings uh, to enjoy our social and exploit our, the opportunity in our social environment as well as protecting our cultural uh, uh, development uh, in, the, in the society. This particular one uh, relates majorly uh, with the society and the economic as well as cultural development of the, the people. And we have some rights under that. For instance, we have rights like right to work, right to decent standard of living, right to social security, and so on. All these ones, they are central to economic, social, as well as cultural uh, rights. And as you can see under that, our one of the rights we have is ability to work anywhere we are. As long as what we are doing is legitimate and it is recognized by the law, 
established by the uh, by the government, one can work in society and you have the right. It's one of those things that one should or citizens should always ask their governments to provide. Then rights like right to the standard standard uh, decent standard of living, as at least there is a minimum standard of living that every citizen should enjoy in a nation. Unlike what we have, especially in some of the African countries, including Nigeria. Our uh, right to social security, our lives and properties should be secured by the government. If a government is not doing enough in terms of security of lives and property, rights, I mean, citizens can, you know, take it up and challenge the government uh, uh, to do that, to do more in terms of securing lives and property of the citizens. That is why we have some organized, I mean, some NGOs like uh, Serap and the rest, they are always uh, uh, on uh, the issue of uh, social and economic right of uh, citizen, and you see it from time to time, they take government to court as a result of their failure to uh, provide social security uh, for the people. There are other rights under uh, this particular category of uh, fundamental human rights. Then uh, lastly, all of that is environmental rights. Under this one, as uh, the name connotes, we're talking about environment. Meaning that our rights that uh, that uh, should be guaranteed in the environment where we live, there are some issues around our environment whereby we need to have optimum opportunity as a result of being in or living in a particular environment. And those are the, those rights. They are the ones that will also always uh, uh, give us the, all those opportunities to enjoy when you live such an environment and we have some of the examples of rights under environmental uh, rights for instance we have uh, um, right to peace uh, we also have right to clean environment we have right to protection from poor pollution and environmental asset for instance right of peace means that you should be able to live peacefully uh, without any form of molestation or harassment anywhere you live whether you are tall, whether you are short, whether you are thin, whether you are fat, whoever you are, as long as you are uh, a human being, you have every right to live peacefully in this particular society. No one has right or monopoly of violence or to disturb your own peace. And you also have no right to disturb the peace of others in any environment, environment where you find yourself. Right to clean environment, meaning that your environment should be uh, should be part of uh, your fundamental human right. I mean, to live in a clean environment. It shouldn't be in an environment whereby people around you drop or turn your own spot or your own uh, uh, surrounding uh, into a refuse bin. You have every right to challenge anyone who must have done that. Uh, even when your environment is being turned to a refuse bin, and the government is not doing the right thing by evacuating those things, you have every right to also challenge and sue the government to cause uh, in the, in the, as, as a result of the failure to make the environment clean for you. Right to protection from pollution and environmental assets. There are a lot of activities going on in our society today whereby people deliberately, you know, turn uh, the environment into... Uh, uh, what was it called? The, the probably, let's say, industrial uh, environment. And as ever of those activities being done in that in those uh, environments, there are pollutions and uh, there are hazards coming from that particular environment. And as ever of that, when you have or you notice that such a thing is happening in the environment, you have every right to caution people that are uh, behind uh, uh, those things. Or you can sue them to court. Those are some of the rights we have there under environmental uh, uh, rights. And today, or at this point, I want to believe that uh, you must have learned one or two things as uh, regard uh, the categories of fundamental human rights. Let me take you one on once again. Under the category, we have categorized all the fundamental human rights we have into different distinct areas. We have one as uh, civic and political rights. We have economic, social, and cultural rights. We also have environmental rights. These are some of, I mean, the categories 
under where under which you can place some of the fundamental human rights uh, uh, we have. And, and at this point, I uh, would like to stop here so as for you to write uh, uh, the notes. When you write the notes, we also have the assignment uh, coming as uh, from what we've had today. As you can see, the assignment says, state three categories of human rights with examples. State three categories of human rights with examples. And uh, by God's grace, I will be expecting your questions and uh, submission of uh, the assignment through the WhatsApp line that, as you can see on the board, the WhatsApp line is 08053-421107, 08053-421107. Uh, I will be expecting your questions and the submission of uh, the answers to the questions asked. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this particular session. See you.